My name is Neil Butterworth, I'm editor of the Daily Echo, and I'm delighted to welcome so many leading lights of the Dorset Business Community to the Dorset Business Awards 2003. The ceremony will start after a comfort break at around 9.15. So at this stage, all I have to do is to say, enjoy your meal. everyone. For our next performance, we are going to use an orchestra of 230 drummers, and that's all of you. So stay where you are, and we're going to get each of you a large African drum. It's, uh, it's hard to believe that a year has passed since I was last on this stage in front of a most distinguished audience representing the creme de la creme of the Dorset business community. And here in Dorset, we seem to have a wealth of companies that thrive on the intensive competition and myriad challenges that the modern business environment creates for us all. However, Dorset companies have a unique advantage, a secret weapon, that not only helps our businesses, but also benefits our body and soul. It's Dorset itself. To those outside the county, their first thoughts would not readily associate this part of the world with thrusting, dynamic businesses, large or small. To many, it's not synonymous with thriving manufacturing companies, nor as a hotbed of innovation. Quite the opposite. Many people think that Dorset's just a great place to come and relax on holiday or for a long weekend, which of course it is. The finalists in tonight's awards clearly demonstrate that we have the best of both worlds. We all know it's a great place to live and work, and the companies that you'll hear about during the next three hours... <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure you were listening. ...are proof that the county has a wide range of vibrant, creative and successful businesses. Just before we look at the first category for the Dorset Business Awards 2003, some of you may recall that moment of panic earlier this evening when you were doorstepped by a cameraman and reporter as you arrived. So before we hear about what the judges think of our finalists, let's hear what you have to say about this event. I think they're extremely good. Uh, we shall certainly be very pleased to, to uh, receive the award if we do, and I think it will be good for the company and certainly good for the employees of the company. I think it's a very good idea. Um, very pleased to be included and be here this evening. I think in terms of regional business events, I think it does uh, allow businesses to uh, appreciate what the local community can do and what you can do in terms of offering support to the local community. So I think it's a very valuable exercise. Well, we're in the final three now, so hopefully you've got a chance this evening to, uh, to pull off the, uh, the big one and win it, so hopefully. This is an excellent event. I was just talking to Rowan Fair a few moments ago, the business editor of the, West, uh, the Daily Echo, um, and it's really the event that kicks off Christmas for businesses down in Bournemouth. Uh, well, I think it's just great to be here and to be selected and have got this far. I'm absolutely delighted. Look intelligent, did you say? I'm actually here to enjoy the Business Awards for the sixth year on the trot. Uh, and these are obviously an occasion to get back in making contact with people, uh, actually on quite a, a relaxed basis, as you can see, from just the start of the evening before one gets into the main event. One of the bigger organisations in the area. Um, we like to support such, such initiatives, I think, in the, uh, in the Dorset area. So, um, yep, we're happy to support it. 
I think they're very important for the local business community. I think it's very good for Dorset. Um, I think we get forgotten quite a lot. We've been coming to this one now for several years. Uh, last year we won the, uh, the company award, so we would support it, wouldn't we? Look around at the people here, and they are the business life in Dorset. And I don't think there's any other, there's any more dif uh, important uh, awards in the, uh, in the county. Well, lots of anticipation and excitement there. And here to tell you about the first category is an equally excited Kelvin Derrick, Group Managing Director of Hamworthy KSC, Deputy Chairman of the Institute of Directors Wessex, and Chair of the Judging Panel for the IOD Learning to Achieve Award. Ladies and gentlemen, Kelvin Derrick. Um, the IOD Learning to Achieve Award is, is new to Dorset Business Awards this year. It celebrates company initiatives that successfully engage staff in learning and knowledge transfer. We're extremely grateful to the Learning and Skills Council for sponsoring this award and for working with the IOD to create an award category that recognises the importance of professional, personal and skills development for staff, not just in the workplace but with secondary, further and higher education as well as other learning partners. Our finalists in alphabetical order are Barclays PLC, Suter Healthcare and Lloyd's TSB Bank. And the winner of the IOD Learning to Achieve Award 2003 is... Suter Healthcare. Suter Healthcare specializes in the OTC, that's the over-the-counter uh, to you and me, medicine market, and has a client list that includes the main players in the healthcare industry, Procter & Gamble, Bioconsumer Care, and many others, far too difficult to pronounce. Suter Healthcare employs 87 full and part-time staff, 61 of whom are in sales. In January of this year, having recognized the need to revitalize and expand the training and development program, Suter Healthcare recruited a dedicated head of training. As a result, the company's commitment to staff development is now built around the Suter Excellence Program, or CEP. It was launched in March 2003, and it's designed to take people through their career cycle, right from recruitment and the first day with the company. The recruitment process is particularly important to Suter because <clears throat> it's in a business sector characterized by unusually high staff turnover. The Suter Excellence Program is in its early days, but it's already contributed to significantly reduce staff turnover. There are already plans to develop the links that already exist to NVQ measures and to commercialize CEP by delivering the training programs to other businesses in this region. What do you think is the biggest single benefit uh, of this activity, both for the company and for the staff? Um, I think uh, initially it was staff retention. We did have in sales, getting young people in. We, we were losing quite quickly. They wanted to move on. But with having a program in place now, and, and training was something they were all looking for, we really keep them interested and motivated. I think that is the real benefit. We're keeping them motivated, and we keep them longer in their jobs. And they really enjoy it now, and they're going out there and actually really getting something out of it now. Thank you, Paul. And we mustn't forget our two remaining finalists who um, uh, submitted extraordinarily good entries, which um, you've just heard about. Um, could I ask Julia Husband for Barclays and Nick Chetwood for Lloyds uh, to join me on the stage to collect their certificates? Now, with great trepidation, because I don't know what he's going to say about me, I'd like to introduce Jeff Ward, Chair of the Judging Panel for our second award, but I'll let Jeff tell you what that is. It's very much my pleasure to introduce the runners and riders for our second award, the DCCI International Award, sponsored by Business Link Wessex. The finalists are Cobham PLC, Network Telex Group, and Shape Technology Limited. 
It will come as no surprise to you that this award recognizes businesses engaged in international trade and is awarded to the company that has shown a marked increase in its international activity over the past 12 months. The winner of the DCCI International Awards is <laughs> Network Telex. <laughs> Twelve years ago, Philip Clark convinced the Prince's Trust that there was a gap in the market and was given £1,500 to set up a business selling telex equipment. The business started well, but then Philip Clark had the unique idea of sending telex messages from a PC using a telex modem across a PC network. Network Telex developed the software and modems, and whilst his Dorset team got on with running the UK operation, Philip embarked on a world tour looking for export business, and it worked. In 2003, export sales will account for 35% of income for its UK-based company. They have an incredible 75% of the UK telex market and believe that achieving the same percentage of the world market is an attainable time, target. Their aim is to continue their success worldwide and will expand existing opportunities with their new offices planned for the United States next year. Well, Philip, congratulations. Well done. When you first got that £1,500 from the, from the Prince's Trust, what was your ambition from there? Well, I asked them for 5000 and they said my idea was really bad. So 1500 was all I could have, funnily enough. Is it a, very much a niche market? It is, but it's growing because of our airline communications, which is still ongoing. So it's good. We wish you every success. Thank you very much indeed. <clears throat> Um, could I ask representatives from Common PLC and Shake Technology Group to come up and collect their awards? And to tell you about our third award category, please welcome the President of the Dorset Chamber of Commerce, Roger Woolley, Managing Director of Leicester Aldridge, and Chair of the Judging Panel for the Business Person of the Year Award. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you, Jeff, for that whistle-stop tour around the world of exporting excellence. Before we look at the finalists for our next category of the Dorset Business Awards, uh, our roving reporter has been out on the street again talking to some of you, and so we've got some comments from the sponsors, judges, and guests at tonight's event. Let's hear what they had to say. Well, this is my first time at the, the Dorset Business Awards, so looking forward to it very much. I think they're a great inspiration to the community. I think it's terrific, a very good networking opportunity. Good to meet a lot of people, a lot of local businesses, and um, good, um, good opportunities. We think they're great for the local business community. It's great to get people together who don't always see each other in their various offices, and it's, it's very good. It's a key event of the year, the Dorset Business, I think. This year, we've had so many people wanting to come. And, uh, you know, that's very gratifying. It just shows that business is booming in Dorset. You need to take time out to celebrate success and, and recognize it. And it's also very inspiring. I mean, people love to be part of success, uh, you know, whether it's Rugby World Cup, whether it's Business Awards, it's Dorset. And I think that's key. It's lovely because it gives small businesses or medium-sized or big businesses to apply for something like that and show their achievements. It's fantastic. Yeah, and we all know about our own businesses. It's a question of whether or not we can learn more about other businesses in our community and hopefully um, benefit from that and uh, build on it. Uh, well, I think they're very, very important to have events like this because it gives recognition to those businesses that have earned it, recognition that they deserve. Um, I work for a housing association and although our prime aim is to produce housing, affordable housing, obviously we want to add value back to the community as well, create employment and training opportunities, so support for these types of occasions fits in very well with that. Oh, I think they're excellent, just getting to know a few people, and uh, we come from North Dorset, it's nice to come down to the metropolis, so <laughs> it's a big day out for us. The, the Leicester Aldridge Business Person of the Year aims to find someone who has made a significant contribution to the success of Dorset business. We, that is the judges, 
have already worked long and hard to get what was an excellent selection of entries down to just three finalists. And they just happen to come from an extremely diverse range of businesses. In alphabetical order, they are Keith Lovelock from McCarthy and Stone, Simon McIntyre from Just Add Water, and Keith Riley from Alphatronics. And the winner is... Keith Lovelock. The Chief was appointed Chairman and Managing Director of International Operations at McCarthy and Stone in 1986, and then appointed the McCarthy and Stone PLC Board three years later. Unfortunately for him, this was directly prior to one of the worst housing recessions in memory. With bank borrowings in excess of £100 million, he was tasked with closing the company's international operations. And by 1991, his efforts had reduced borrowings by around £20 million, making a significant contribution to the company's recovery. In recognition of his ability, Keith was appointed Group Operations Director in July 1992, and a year later became Chief Executive of McCarthy & Stone PLC. Under his leadership, company fortunes have reversed from losses of £19 million in 1992 to record profits of £116 million in 2003. Now a FTSE 250 company with a value of about £500 million, McCarthy & Stone enjoys the highest margins in the industry and is a frequent winner of top industry accolades. Can you tell us what, what, what achievement are you most proud of in your time at McCarthy & Stone? Um, <clears throat> I think probably with the little cash that we had over the last 10 years, making sure that it was invested in the right land and the right place. That's the most important thing we've done. And are we going to see those profits go up and up for the next few years? We'll certainly try and keep it going. Great. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you very much. We mustn't forget our two remaining finalists. So could I ask Simon McIntyre and Keith Riley to come and join me on the stage to collect their certificates? And now it gives me great pleasure to hand over to Tony Cottam, senior partner from KPMG and chair of the judging panel for the final award category. A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I was just thinking what a breathtaking array of business talent we've seen so far this evening. And I can assure you it's not over yet. It's my pleasure to introduce the finalists for the KPMG Company of the Year Award. They are in alphabetical order, of course. Highbury Paragon, New Look Group, and Wayfarer Transit Systems. It seems to be a common theme for finalists this evening in all the categories, that they represent a diverse range of industries, which to my mind is actually one of the great strengths of Dorset business. This award continues that theme. Although they are in very different industries serving completely different customers, to become the KPMG Company of the Year, they've all been judged against the same criteria. Excellence in innovation in products and services, the ability to identify and exploit new markets, past achievements and future plans, staff involvement and their motivation to meet corporate aims, contribution to the community and a commitment to the protection of the environment, and of course, financial performance. So there we have it. Three great Dorset companies, all in the frame, the title of KPMG Company of the Year 2003. The winner is... <laughs> Highbury Paragon. <laughs> Highbury Paragon is an innovative, market-leading magazine publishing company. It combines the proven ability to identify and exploit new markets with sound financial discipline. A discipline that has enabled the company to more than double pre-tax profits in three years, from 1.3 million in 2001 to 2.8 million in 2003. They are on course to post profits of 3.2 million pounds in the current financial year. The company concentrates on titles aimed at the early adopter market 
and includes publications specialising in the internet, digital photography, DVD, as well as game consoles and computer magazines. As well as publishing magazines in the UK, Harvey Paragon has turned its attention to licensing titles to overseas markets. The team dedicated to this activity has, has already sold over 90 licenses. Harvey Paragon is now part of Hybrid House Communications, who bought the business for £32 million in July this year. The acquisition of the company by Highbury demonstrates how re highly rated it is within its industry, significant growth prospects, and also provides hard evidence of management's ability to dramatically increase shareholder value. What are the advantages of being based in Dorset? It's sunnier, <laughs> it's by the sea. Um, I think it's, uh, we're, we're lucky I think in Bournemouth, uh, uh, we're surrounded by a lot of creative industries. Uh, Bournemouth University creates, uh, uh, turns out a lot of very creative uh, young individuals. Um, I think for young people, the people who are interested in writing our magazines, this is a great place to live. And uh, it's no coincidence that uh, people like working in a creative business during the day and going out and enjoying those clubs uh, in uh, Old Christchurch Road. And uh, that, that's important to us. Well, Harvey Paragon is certainly a fantastic business. Mark, many, many congratulations. Thank you very much. Our two remaining finalists are also great Dorset businesses, so please give a very generous round of applause to Will Curden of New Look and Tony McNamara of Wayfair as they come up to collect their certificates. <laughs> Some of you might have noticed that the trophies are actually quite heavy for the winners. Well, the trophies are made here in Dorset, and the base is solid Purbeck stone. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the formal part of the Dorset Business Awards for 2003. On behalf of all the sponsors, I'd like to thank the winners, the finalists, and the judges. So perhaps you'd all be very kind enough to give them all a very generous round of applause to mark the end of the evening. Thank you very much for coming.